Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Roots Tech 2021, or Roots Tech Connect, as we're calling it. Uh, I'm Tom Reed. I'll be uh, sharing a, a presentation I've titled Connecting with Ancestors Completes Us. I'm coming to you from South Jordan, Utah, a suburb of Salt Lake, uh, where for the past, whatever, 11, 12 years, 11 years, we've hosted Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, but now we're coming virtual. And so I look forward to this opportunity to share with you and hopefully reach even a broader audience than we've ever been able to reach before. Last I heard it was over 160,000 registrants from 80 something plus countries. Um, this is amazing. And I, and I hope that this message will reach you wherever in the world you are and, and be a benefit and a help as I talk about, again, connecting with ancestors, complete us. This picture that I'm sharing here is uh, is key to this story, and I think illustrates it. And you'll you'll understand as kind of we go along. So I'm Tom Reed. I'm a deputy chief genealogical officer with Family Search International, based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Family Search is sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and is a free service that we provide online for you to do your family history and genealogy. Um, and did I mention it was free? <laughs> uh, just a quick plug for, for, for my employee. But I'm not here to talk really about um, family search and, and our capabilities and things like that. There are other classes that you'll have here during Roots Tech Connect and available for the next year that will go in depth on those kinds of things. And I wanna start today by sharing a story. Now the story originates from the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture, which is located in Washington, D.C. here in the United States. And it happened on December 6, 2016. That's me standing to the left there, the tall, dark, handsome one, <laughs> um, next to Lonnie Bunch, who's the founding director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And he's holding a lantern, and, I, and I'll tell you what that lantern means in just a moment. And then standing next to him is Elder D. Todd Christofferson, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Also with, uh, next to Elder Christofferson is Rex Ellis, who is one of the chief curators at the museum. We were there on December 6, 2016, to celebrate the conclusion of the Freedmen's Bureau Project, which was a project, a partnership between the museum Family Search, other historical and genealogical societies, and the National Archives and Records Administration. And that, those, that database or those records were put on a thumb drive and put into this little lantern that Elder Christofferson on behalf of the church presented to Lonnie Bunch, the museum, as a gift to the museum. And so now if you go to the Robert F. Smith Explore Your Family History Center in the museum, you'll be able to search through these records as well as go on familysearch.org to search these records. And so this lantern represented kind of an icon as part of the whole project. Um, and so we presented that kind of as a gesture of, of completion and thanks to the museum for all their help, for their volunteers, for their support. And the interesting thing was, uh, you know, Lonnie Bunch, who is now the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, the 14th secretary, he shared a personal story I didn't know about. Um, we you know, went through this project and we, we went through volunteers and then at the celebration, Lonnie has this big reveal, right? Um, this big reveal that I did not have any idea what he was gonna share, but he shares his personal connection to these records. And I'd like to share that with you right now. And I have to tell you, we started doing this from a scholarly perspective. But this really became very personal to me in ways I didn't expect. Now, for, bear with me to tell you a quick story. My paternal grandparents died two weeks apart just before I turned five. So I have very limited memories. The only memory I really have is that my grandmother used to take out cookie tins and make sort of crescents and stars. And as a little kid, I thought that was wonderful. But that's all the only memory I have. So years go by and we're in the middle of this project, and I decide to figure out, can I find my relatives? So I find a woman named Candace Bunch, who was the earliest relative that we know, and there is a labor contract, and she's working with the man who owned the plantation next to where she was enslaved. 
And on the front part of the piece of paper, the labor contract, it talks about how much she was paid to clean the house or to pick cotton. But on the other side, it talked about what she spent. She spent money for cotton seed. She spent money to borrow a horse. But there in the last piece, it said she spent 22 cents to buy cookie tins. Now, I got to tell you, I'm crying. Um, And I realized that what this allows thousands of people like me to do is to find themselves, is to be connected with a past that they had lost. Suddenly, I now understand more about why that cookie tin was so important to my grandparents. And ultimately, without access to these records, I would have never known that. And so in a way, what I want to say is thank all the volunteers. I want to thank Family Search. I want to thank the National Archives. Because what you've really done is, yes, you've helped us uncover the past. What you've really done is you're helping thousands of people to be made whole again. And that is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to America. And so thank you for that. What an amazing story, his own personal story. And what I'm sharing with you right now is one of the labor contracts that includes Lonnie Bunch's grandmother. Here she is in the record, Candace Bunch. And here she is down at the bottom, these two baker tins for 60 cents. Now there were other labor contracts, obviously Lonnie found one where um, she got three for 22 cents, but this is the power of these records and this is the power of connecting with ancestors and how it completes us. Lonnie said, you're helping thousands of people to be made whole again, whole again. He also talked about recovering a past that we had lost. Right? And that's what genealogy and connecting with our ancestors does. It makes us whole. It completes us in ways that maybe we didn't even realize we needed to be complete. Let me rewind a little bit and, and kind of share a little bit about my family. Um, in 1977, we were living on Treasure Island Naval Station in California here in the United States. My dad was part of the Air Force. And so here we are as a family. You see my father, my mother, my sister, and me with missing my two front teeth that I was desperately hoping for that next Christmas. Uh, But um, we, along with the world almost, uh, at least the United States and and lots uh, in surrounding countries as well, were fascinated and, and gotten drawn into roots. In 1976, Alex Haley, a historian, um, chose to write his own memoir, if you will, and he called it Roots, the Saga of an American Family, and he is able to trace his own lineage back to West Africa. He's quoted as saying, in all of us, there's a hunger marrow deep to know our heritage, to know who we are and where we have come from. I feel like there's so much truth in that statement that it's, it's somehow innate in us and it's deep down to the point where he calls it a hunger that's marrow deep and that we want to know our heritage. In 2017, after the completion of the Freedmen's Bureau project, we took time on the Friday of Roots Tech, where we were in person back then, um, to have what was called African Heritage Day. And our keynote speaker was none other than LeVar Burton. That day he shared his own personal story, if you will. He talked about the power of story in life and and talked about his relationship with his mother and grandmother. Talked about his relationship with Gene Roddenberry from Star Trek and he talked about his relationship also with Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. One of the things we did after his keynote is I had the opportunity on behalf of Family Search and our VIP research team to present Mr. Burton with his own family history. And here's a picture of that. As you can see, he, he's visibly <laughs> touched at the gesture of presenting him with his family history. And in it, we shared things like his grandfather and grandmother's marriage certificate, where his grandfather had signed the marriage certificate, things that he had never seen. But one of the things that I think touched him the most 
was being able to see the names of his ancestors who were formerly enslaved, living in Wilkinson County, Mississippi, prior to emancipation. That touched him in a way that I, I couldn't, that no one would have imagined. And it was actually captured on, on stage in this picture where he declares, those are my people. In that moment, he claimed his ancestors and that connection was so deep, it completed him. It helped him be made whole. It had filled a part of him that he didn't know needed to be filled. This is what happens when we connect with our ancestors. This is what it means when I say connecting with ancestors completes us. Now I wanna tell you my own story and my own experience and how I experienced this for myself. It actually goes back to, again, I've told you that I work as a deputy chief genealogical officer for Family Search International, but that wasn't what I was originally hired to do. I was originally hired to work in marketing. And one assignment that I had for marketing was to go collect or go document and film video and, and, um, and still photography, the process of collecting oral histories in Africa. And so I went to Ghana. Here are my Ghanaian cousins in one of the villages that we're at. Family Search has for years been collecting the oral histories of the village remembers, the griots, um, working with tribal leaders and, and with the village elders and, and those who have this memory of their oral tradition, documenting that, creating these lineage linked files and then putting it on paper to give back to the village. There are many of the young folks who are leaving the villages, obviously, and going for the bigger cities and the opportunities and they don't have a chance to remember their history and they don't have paper records in many instances. And so our collection of oral histories is vitally important to preserving the legacy and the stories of these people. And so here I was in this village with my cousins, right? Uh, we didn't speak the same language, but I was clearly of African descent. I looked a lot like them, real chocolate, you know, beautiful chocolate people. And we were just having a good time, such a good time that they wanted to take this photo. And although we couldn't communicate verbally, look at the body language. I'm with family, y'all. This, this is like, that's my uncle that I got my arm around who's got his arm around me. And it was beautiful, beautiful and a way for me to connect and get an interest in my homeland. Obviously I'm from African descent, but I didn't know before where my people may have come from. For many of us, we can't do that Kunta Kinte story like Alex Haley and get back to our African roots. Although I, I, I'm on the path, right? And, I, and, and that's what's coming. <laughs> I'll share with you in a moment. This here was my Ghanaian auntie. We had just completed um, the oral history or the oral collection, oral history collection process with this village. And we gave the actual village leader, um, the chief of the village, printed copy of, of the family histories that we've compiled. And so they had a celebration with drums and music. You can kind of see in the background the drums and things like that. And I was with there with my group. And all of a sudden the drums start beating and everybody starts dancing and I'm like, I'm feeling it, you know? And so they like call me out and my Ghanaian auntie starts like teaching me these moves that I need to do and it was a blast. I recorded it all on my own YouTube. It's, it was a wonderful experience I had, which again made me want to connect with my roots, reclaim my African roots. And while I was in Ghana, we went, you know, for, to these villages and things like that, but we had the opportunity to go visit the Elmina Ghana Slave Castle. This is the castle that was fortified, I think originally built by the Portuguese as part of the transatlantic slave trade um, process where they would enslave people, bring them and put them in what I'm standing in, the male slave dungeon. This dungeon would have held 2,000, 3,000 men. Um, and they were being left here, prepared to be marched through that. You can see kind of in this photo, the, uh, my back is facing the door of no return. Um, I had just come out of the door of no return where I'd seen the steps that marched them to the ocean, where they would get on those ships, where they would leave the continent forever never to return. Many died across the, the ocean. 
But here I was in this dungeon, and I'm so grateful that our photographer on this trip caught this picture because I was seeking answers. Why? And I wanted to connect. And, and I wanted, like, I, I don't know, I was just in that moment just feeling so much anger, frustration, but the thing that I wanted most was to reach out and touch them and feel my brothers who and feel their pain. And I remember in that moment, God revealed to me <laughs> that this was my purpose, was to make sure their stories get told that they're not forgotten, that the legacy of those who endured the transatlantic slave trade gets told to the world. And so that's what I'm doing for Family Search today, is I'm working on an initiative uh, we're calling Reclaiming Our African Roots to help individuals make that connection back. Some might not be able to make it through a paper trail, but that's what I felt called to do in that moment in the Elmina Slave Castle. And so I came home after having, you know, again, meet my cousins, after dancing and celebration in one of the villages, and after having this kind of painful but healing experience in the Elmina Slave Castle. I came home, and what did I want to do? Take a DNA test. So I partnered with my friends at Ancestry, bought their test, and I received my results on November 18th of 2016. And I decided that I wanted to share my results with the world. Um, I'm big on Facebook and you can follow me there. Um, but I decided to do a Facebook Live. And so here is just a clip that I want to share with you of my Facebook Live DNA reveal. Just, and, it, and it captures again this whole notion of connecting with ancestors completes us. Okay, so your DNA results summary, here we go, okay. Tom we? Reed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ethnicity estimate right here 42%. Cameroon and Congo wow. 15%. Benin and Togo 9%. Mali and 10 Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. <laughs> Whew, what am I feeling right now, right? I, I, I don't know. Like, this is just. Like, I've been Great. doing, I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> I knew it would happen. I'm not sad. These are tears of joy, although I got this ugly look on my face right now. Woo. Um. Wow, you know, I, whew, let me get it together now. Um, you know, I've been I've been with Family Search for three years, and whew, really, the last eighteen months with the Freedmen's Bureau Project has been when I've been most um, interested in finding out where I'm from. And because of the project, to be honest, I haven't been able to do the research I've wanted to do. I'm still with my family in, you know, Montgomery County, uh, in Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, but, and, and, you know, for me, I would love, I would love nothing more than to connect, obviously, with my roots in Africa. You know, uh, and today, here's the, here it is. This, this is my connection. My connection right now is DNA. 42% Cameroon and 15% Benin and Togo. That was my experience. That was raw, unscripted, y'all. <laughs> that was me in my feelings, right? And in that moment, I remember feeling like a part of me had been made whole. That there was a hole in my heart and a longing, might I say a hunger, marrow deep, to know my heritage and to know where I come from, as Alex Haley said it. And in that moment, having that knowledge of DNA and my connection directly to Africa filled that hole, made me whole, and provided healing and answers that I didn't ever think I needed to have answered. You know, I didn't know the questions, right? 
And this is the power of family history. This is the power of knowing your story. This is the power of these connections you can make with your ancestors. And so the, uh, you know, it begs the question, how can you connect with your ancestors and feel complete? Well, let me tell you, you're doing it now. You're doing it with Roots Tech Connect with participating in this conference and learning from me. Again, my story is not a how-to story and, and I'm not gonna take you on the path of, of your, you know, how you go back and have your Kunta Kente experience like Alex Haley did. Those are other classes that you can take, but you're here and I invite you to take advantage of all that we have to offer. These classes will be available for at least a year following the conference and they'll be able to walk you step-by-step step through records through oral histories, through DNA, and how you can connect with your ancestors and how you can feel more complete. I said it earlier, I think this statement rings true. And I know it rings true because I've seen it in this man's life. When he says, those are my people. I've seen it in my life as I cry those ugly tears. <laughs> <laughs> I got that ugly look on my face. There were tears of joy. Um, and as Lonnie talks about how he was made whole. And I hope that you will take the opportunity to connect with your ancestors. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've been inspired, uplifted. I hope that you have and make the connections that you're seeking. Thank you.